Another form of interfacing in AutoCAD is the palette. Many managers and tools are in the form of a palette. These palettes have tools, commands, or information that allow you to manipulate your objects or to add to your drawing. One palette that I always use is the Property Inspector. I have it open right now, it's here on the right. That's this guy right here. To open it, press Control and 1 at the same time. Or to close it, press Control and 1. So by pressing Control and 1 at the same time, I can toggle it off or I can toggle it back on. The Properties Inspector shows you information on your object that you have selected, and it shows you some basic information about your file or your drawing. So I need some objects in my drawing first. So I'm going to draw a line, press L, then Enter for the line command, pick a point anywhere, then pick a second point, and then right click to cancel out. Let's also draw a circle. Type in the letter C, then press Enter for circle, Pick anywhere that you want on the screen. That will be the center point of the circle. Move your mouse out and just left click again. Now it doesn't matter exactly what the properties are of our line and circle here. I just need two different objects to demonstrate to you what we're doing. So if I select one, the properties inspector gives us some information. It says here that it's a line. And this shows you some of the essentials or the basic important bits of information. And it tells you what layer it's on, look what color, the line type, the line type scale, plot style, line weight, transparency, and its length. So this is a great way to get information on something, like the length of the line. Now to unselect the line, press the escape key. And you can see here it goes back to normal. Select the circle, just left click on the circle. It gives you information here, the same basic type of information, but then it has circle based information, like radius diameter, circumference, area. So you can see here that the properties inspector palette is very intelligent. It knows what the object is and will display that type of information specific to that specific object to you. Now you have a couple of different options here. You have the essentials or you have all. If I click on the all, it will tell you everything that it possibly can about that object. It will tell you even more than what you had before. It will tell you the coordinates of the center of the circle, and it will give you a lot of different information. Now, if you select more than one object at a time, the properties inspector tells you, it says all, meaning all selections, there are two in total. It can't break everything down for you for everything you have selected, because what if you've selected 100 or so different objects, which is viable in the drawing process? It can't possibly show you everything, so it groups it up, and all of the object information that is relative to every object selected will be displayed. So everything has a color, layer, line type, and these general items, they all have those, no matter what it is you've selected. So it will show you that. But you can click on this arrow right here, and it will list everything out. This is all, or you can just look at the circles you have selected, and it will show you that information. Again, you can press escape, and it will let go of everything. I'm going to draw a couple of more circles. Start the circle command, and we're going to make each of these different sizes. Now let's select all three of them at the same time. Left click anywhere on the screen, it creates a selection window. If I move to the left and below, it makes a crossing window. It looks green on the screen and there's a dashed line. If I move up and to the right, it's a solid line and it's blue. That's a selection window. This is a crossing, this is a selection. On a selection, anything that's inside and it has to be completely inside will be selected. If it's a crossing selection, anything that is inside or that this box passes through will be selected. So I don't have to make sure I have the whole circle. I can just pass through it like so, and it will be selected. Now it tells you right here how many of these objects you've picked. There's three of them, and it has all of the information that I can get. Now you can see here it says multiple, multiple. That means there are multiple values for these selections. If you use AutoCAD for PC, then it will say varies. That's what it means. And that is the Properties Inspector palette. Now all palettes have similar properties to them. I can left click on them, hold that left click, and then drag it. I can move it around. I have my close box here where I can close it, or I can just collapse it. Here I can close them all. You can also go up to your windows in the pull down menu, and you have all of these different items here. I can hit reset palettes and it will reset them to their default state if I want. I'm going to cancel this, but that's something you can do. Or I can click on these one at a time, 
and start bringing them back one at a time. So this button here, again, if I click it, it will restore everything back to the way I had it before. If you come up to like the corner here or the edge, I can stretch them, make them taller, shorter, thinner, wider. You can make them fit however you want. And that's one of the really great things about palettes. And all palettes have that ability. I have these set up here myself to fit on my screen. And you can see there are a lot of different options and they will snap in place. They will often reset to fit however you want them to and you can make them work for you. Now, sometimes they may just seem to automatically snap or reset to some way that you don't want them to. That's okay, just move them back. And even these on the bottom, like the command line or the status bar, they too are palettes. Let's look at some of the other palettes. We saw that Control 1 will open up your properties palette here. Control 2, that will bring up your content palette that's here on the left. If you've used AutoCAD on Windows, you'll know this as the Design Center. This palette is a tool where you can get items from other drawings and bring them into your current file. We'll talk a little bit more about it in depth later. Control 3 will bring your toolbar palette up. Now it's going to turn mine off, turns it back on. That's this guy here. The command line is also a tool palette. That's this right here. You can move it around, you can change it, you can shrink it. I usually keep it at about one line myself at the bottom. So if I click here, it will allow you to move it up. You can see it takes up a lot of room and it shows my last commands. I can scroll up and down through it and I typically don't want that. But if you do, feel free to use it. And you can open that and close it by pressing Control and 9. That will give you access to it. Now there's another one called Control 0. It's not a palette but a drawing mode. It's called the clean screen mode. This mode gets rid of almost everything on your screen, giving you the most screen real estate to draw with. So press control and zero at the same time. And you can see here, you can press control or command zero. So this is really nice because you can draw on your entire screen and it fills it up. Control zero will just bring you back. I found that this guy here on the status bar a lot of times just keeps moving. Now you can press it, change it, it'll add things to it. And a lot of times I just keep it this way to cover up my whole screen and to keep these on the right. You can work with it however you want to. That's the good and bad thing about AutoCAD. It's very much customizable and you can work with it any way that you want to. But at the same time, if it changes a little bit, it can get you really confused and lost. That's okay. So I typically leave things the way they are out of the box. I don't change them too much. I've had to make a couple of modifications here for this training video to fit everything into the proper resolution that we're recording at. Otherwise, it's going to look essentially like this for you. So those are your palettes. You can move them around, turn them off, turn them on. And don't forget, you can go up to your menu bar here, go to Window, and you can toggle all of these off or on as you see fit. If the check mark is there, they're on. If it's not there, then these are turned off. So if you don't remember those, control one, two, three, or fours, you can just come up to your window and pick the one you want and turn it on. 